All right, guys. Uh, welcome. Uh, one of the guys that runs in one of our leagues at I race asked me to help him out on teaching him how to pretty much get started by painting cars for iRacing using Photoshop. So, just gonna do a really quick guide on how to start if you're looking to go into painting cars and wanna start playing around with that thing. I am not a professional, far from it. I have absolutely no training on those apps, on graphic design, nothing like that. I'm just one of the guys that started messing around with Photoshop, started messing around with the whole thing. Went inside forums, got read a bunch of things, and started to play around, and now I can do my own thing, create a couple of things. Again, nowhere near being a professional, but if you are a beginner, if you're a rookie, have no clue what you're doing, this might actually help you out, okay? So, a couple of things that you are going to need. First, Photoshop. Photoshop, it's now a much more accessible tool that you can go online and you can find at uh, adobe.com. You can buy a personal license for 10 bucks a month if you want to. So it's very affordable. There's no need for you to buy a license costing 100 to 100 dollars. So it's pretty easy to get access to it. And it's a cloud-based option, so you can pretty much download just the view. You're going to need, of course, an iRacing account. And you're going to need Trading Paints as well to have an account at Trading Paints. So you can pretty much load your paint schemes that you're creating so that people racing with you on iRacing can see it and you can see it as well. And probably the most important thing, you're going to need time because especially at the beginning this can be a very time consuming thing because creating the paints it's all about having the idea in your head making sure that you can visualize what you want to do finding the right tools the right pictures the right basis for you to start making whatever you want so this especially at the beginning where you're getting yourself used to all of the all of the tools this is going to take a while Okay, so once you have access to Photoshop, iRacing, trading paints, and you can sit down for at least half an hour and an hour, you should be pretty pretty easy to do. Right? So let's start with iRacing, because that's where you're gonna need a couple things. So here we go guys. This is basically iRacing page. If you go, in order for you to have access to the templates, because this is a key thing for you to be able to paint your car, in order to paint a Gen 6 model, you need to have the painting templates for that particular car. And you can do that from for every single car on iRacing. Where do you find them? Okay. If you go to my account over here, Customize Paint Scheme and you click on cars. You're gonna open the set of every car available on iRacing. Mostly it's gonna show a lot of the cars that you have, okay? Once you have access to this, the only part where you need to click is here. Download car template. Once you do this, you can notice that I have downloaded over here a template for a Chevy SS. Okay. This is the file that you're gonna have. It's it will be a PSD, a Photoshop, Adobe Photoshop file. This is what you are going to need, okay, in order to start painting. And this is gonna be done with every single car. So you can do it, you can see over here on the background that you have multiple cars. See, everything from indie cars, old schools, Cadillacs, Legends, the whole nine yards. If you do own a car, you can have it, okay? If you do not want to go in and download individual ones, you can come up here and download all of the templates at once. So pretty much everything that you own, you're going to download the template, 
Okay, this may save you some time, but if you're not looking to painting cards for everything, it's easier if you just download individually. You can do that not only with cars, but you can do that with helmets, and you can do that with suits. You can see the download helmet template, and you can have also the part with the, the fire suits. Okay, if you really get get it going, this might be the next step. Okay, but let's go back to the cars. All right, so you have everything done, no problem, and you downloaded your car template. First thing you're going to do once you open it, you're going to open it on Photoshop, and this is it. So Photoshop, pretty extensive tool for you to play around with graphics and playing whatever you want to do. You can see here that I have three different templates, and this is just to show you guys that different cars have different templates. So this is why you need the correct template for the car that you want to run. Because I have a Toyota Camry, the Xfinity car, the B-Class, open up here. And you can see that they are extremely different from the Toyota Camry Gen 6 car. See, they are completely in a different position. And for iRacing to be able to read it, the file in the correct way, you need to paint them on top of the correct template. Okay, so this is your first thing. Make sure that you have the correct template in order to start. See, Toyota Gen 6, Camry, this is the Mustang. It's completely different. Okay, so that is your first assignment. Make sure that you have the right one. I'm going to use the, the, the Mustang here as a base. Okay, so once you open up the template, a lot of guys say, oh, but I cannot do anything. Everything is kind of locked. I cannot add it. I cannot paint if it go. So it doesn't allow me to do anything. Oh, it's supposed to be, they cannot add it anything. And this is where knowing and understanding Photoshop comes into play. Because Photoshop, it's a collection of layers. You need to understand that and understand that concept because that's going to be applied to everything that you're going to do. If you understand that every picture that you're painting over here is a collection of layers, you need to have access to different layers. How do I get access to the different layers for this template for me to be able to go in and personalize everything that I want? That's where you go to the right side of your Photoshop over here on the right side, the bottom part. You can see that you have two folders over here. First one, turn off before exporting, meaning you will have access to a lot of the stuff that compiled this template from copyright, the wiring for the car, so you can see all of the curves from the chassis. This, once you go really deep into painting, it's better if you can follow the line changing the colors. That is going to make your painting job even more realistic. But if you are a rookie, that doesn't really matter. You can just paint it around and iRacing it will make it work no matter what. Okay. You have the mask of the car that is all of the separation so you know which part is which, where's the hood, where's the side doors, where's the panels, the whole thing, right? It pretty much lets you see the car. Okay. You can see where your sponsor blocks are going to be. So if you add sponsors, pictures to this paint, these are the guidelines that iRacing suggests to you to use to place those logos, to place those names. And they are going to be very well positioned once you're racing the car. But these are things that you do not need to have them on. And if you do leave them on, once you save your paint, they are going to be showing this squares, this all of these banners, and you do not want that, so leave this thing off. The same thing uh, with the numbers, number blocks. It just shows you where the numbers are going to be placed once you load up the paint. So you're going to have on the back paneling over here to your right, on the front bumper, side to side, and on the roof. This is a good thing for you to know just when you're painting and you want to see, oh, let me just take a look if I'm trying to have a picture or having something done in the painting. I just want to see if the numbers are going to cover them up 
is a good thing for you to highlight just so you can see where the numbers are but you don't need and cannot have this thing on once you save the file okay and you can have other things from all of the the little parts that you can see from the from the card just that they make the whole thing all of the decals from the the manufacturer that whole thing the sponsors the the whole nine yards this is one of the things that I normally leave out when I'm painting a car because iRacing is going to add them up anyway but and depending on the version of the template that you have this might be overlapping with another one and it might look like you have two or three different layers of this thing so me particularly I leave them out once I'm painting then I just save it without it and it will work this is not the most important thing that you need to start painting okay this folder over here what actually matters to you for you to be start loading and painting whatever you want to do is this paintable area this is the most important one and this is where you need to have it open and this is where the layer part of everything starts once you open it up you can see that you have a lot of breakdowns on what you can do from tape pit box colors windshield pull-offs the colors of the roll bars that whole thing okay remember that I said that a paint job on iRacing is a collection of layers right and for you to be able to edit all those things you need to be able to select the proper layer that you want to edit okay so if I want to paint something and add it a certain layer like this based layer over here that is all blue you can see that the last one the bottom one over here it's called layer number one once I select the layer number one on the right you can see that in the picture it got selected see the all the the little boxes over here that I can change the size change the whatever I have over here that means once that happens see if I click off it disappears I'm gonna click back on it shows that this particular layer has been selected once you select a layer that opens it up the opportunity for you to edit okay I'm just gonna show you a really quick thing I have the base paint layer selected they're all blue I'm gonna use my pencil my brush tool over here I'm going to select a size for that brush just so you can see okay you can see the the size of the brush the the big circle on the screen and I'm going to change from this blue I'm going to select a color and I'm going to paint it green okay the whole thing layer selected the right layer and I'm just going to paint everything green whole thing green you can see it here it will let you know it will let you see what is painted and there you go you were able to edit this particular layer but at the same time that the whole thing went green once I painted this one you can see that a couple of other things are still following the blue like why why did that happen I just painted the whole thing yes you painted this particular layer layer number one remember again it's a collection of layer you can have layers on top of layers that once you have all of them combined they will form a picture you have the roll bars over here right the fin rails that whole thing they're blue oh can I change this yes for you to change this particular color what do you do you select the fin rails the that particular layer you can see that it selects automatically over here and instead of having it green I'm gonna have them in black there you go notice that the whole thing underneath was green and I added it to be green instead of blue 
why when I paint it, it only painted this? Because they are a different layer. So once you have a layer selected, every other layer, they are never going to be affected by changes that you are doing to a particular one. Okay? So this is where the construction of everything that you're doing is going to come into play. Okay? If you understand that, okay, play around just trying to select a lot of stuff, changing the colors, changing the whole thing, see if you can get used to just that part. Once you get used to that idea, you're going to start to, you're probably going to want to open it up a lot of other things about you, what you're doing. And like, all right, awesome. Now I can change colors, I can paint the color that I want. But race cars have designs. Right? How do I create a design? How do I do it? You can do it manually, right? But for guys starting to do paint jobs, iRacing actually did something to help you out. That they created a lot of patterns already for you to be able to use and customize to the colors that you want. And they are over here. You can see layer number one. Right on top of it, you have a little folder that if you open it up, it will open up a lot of different predetermined and pre-selected patterns for you to use as a template for your paint job if you want to. Okay. Once you select one, they're all going to light up. So you need to pretty much deselect the ones that you do not want to be using. Okay. So you can go from one to you see that the moment that I hit this part, everything changed, right? my template look completely different. And looking at the screen, you can tell, oh, this makes a lot of sense. This looks like a paint job. You can see the rim, you can see the different parts, different sections, roof, hood, everything painted a different color. And you can go through this selecting one to one. You can pretty much see all the different variations, all the different options that you can have. Right? Pretty easy, pretty self-explanatory. A couple of them are extremely ugly. But you can get a, an idea about what it is or how to use it. Right? They have a bunch of different options, a bunch of different things. Okay? We're going to do something just to, to, uh, to give you an idea. Oh. I looked at this one. Oh, I really like this one. The variations, the colors, that whole thing. I really like this one. Can I use this to do my template, to do my painting, changing the colors on this particular pattern? Yes, you can. And once, if you want to do that, you have two ways. One, you can edit this particular pattern as a whole using this thing as one entire layer. So if you want to do that part, what do you do? Once again, you need to be able to select the layer that you want to edit. So, oh, I like this pattern over here. This to the right is the one that I have selected. You can select the pattern so it highlights everything. And once you do that, you can edit specific parts. If you go to, your, to the left side over here to your toolbars, you're going to see a lot of different tools. The fourth tool that looks like a little magic wand. That's because that's the precise name. If you're using the magic wand, and this is, if this is not pre-selected, just hold the button and it'll open up the possibility for you to change from the quick selection to the magic wand. Allows you to pick specific areas that you want to highlight. So, oh, awesome. I want to change the color of the hood, but I don't want to change the color of the rest or you want to pre-select one particular area. You, using the magic wand and having this particular layer selected, you just go to the area that you want to select and just click it. You can see that selected only the hood, right? Well, this will allow you to do is change the color on this particular session alone. So awesome, I want to have just the hood of my car painted in a different color. You select the hood, change the tools to your brush, select the color that you want. I'm going to paint this deep purple. 
just to give you an idea. And because I only have that area selected, you can paint that particular area by itself without any other area of that template to be painted. Okay? That just goes to show you. Oh, awesome. But I want to select more areas. Everything that was green, I want to paint it purple. Awesome. You select that particular area. Holding the shift key on your keyboard, you can actually select more than one area. So you can see that I am selecting every part of this paint job that has the color green from layer from all of the the front bumper the small selections over here and this is where I told you guys that you will need some time because not all of them are going to be perfect that you click and it selects everything sometimes they are breaking down by small little sections so the more time you have to work on these things better it will be more perfect your paint job is going to be okay so take your time like don't try to rush once you're doing this especially in the beginning because this is going to feel weird right but if you can select everything and i'm doing it extremely slow very manually so everybody can see it and don't have a problem Right? I'm pretty sure I forgot a couple sections, but if I did, that's not a big thing. This is just to show you guys what to do. So I think I have pre-selected every green area of the paint job. Right? I can release the shift key. I can change the tools back to the brush. And I can just paint it on top of it. Once again, every other color is not impacted, but everything that I have selected it will change colors. Okay, you can see that there are a couple of small little sections that, because they are divided, it didn't select. Just go back, select them again. Just make sure that everything's good. All right. You can do that editing the pattern itself, or you can move one step forward and make sure that every different color that you're painting sits on top of its own private layer right and how you do that you're always going to have one base layer remember that green one that we painted all the way down here we were editing one particular one that we selected but like, awesome i want to keep that but i like how they broke it down the this particular areas can i just select this and have it painted on top as one particular layer yes you can what do you do you select this section so you'll be able to pick whatever you want i'm going to pick actually everything that is in red and because red is the dominant color in here pretty sure if i select the dominant one the one that has more it will automatically select everything. Okay? So there I go. Click the red, everything that is in red, you can see the different the the thing that divided has been already pre-selected. Alright, I want to have a particular layer paint just this areas. What do you do? You deselect this that you were working on come back to the bottom and what you do is you come up top to the menu bar layers and you add a layer right layer number two you can see here that it will open up a second layer completely empty on top of your original one because you had selected all the areas that you wanted to paint previously that selection stays there you never lose that selection unless you click outside using the magic wand to basically remove that selection. But since that's not what we want to do, we want to keep that selection to be able to paint it on top of it and create a different layer. You select the color that you want. In this case, I'm going to paint it white just because I wanted to. Go back to the brush. And everything that you had selected, remember, we used 
we select everything that is in red in this particular using this pattern as our guideline okay once you go in and paint it you see the things that were not in red are not affected but everything else that you selected they change colors see you can come back and you can see that a couple of areas actually they did not select for some reason so what you can do is you come back and you make sure that those particular areas get selected so you can paint it the way that you want Once you get close, if you don't want to keep fighting with the selection, that's where you can pretty much go in and just manually fix the parts that are missing. But remember one thing, once you start doing this, you are painting the entire layer. So every little change that you make is going to impact this layer. Okay, And this is something that is going to be sitting on top of everything else that you were doing. So make sure that if you're doing it manually, you know what you're painting. Okay? So there you go, just to give a, a little base, right? Awesome, this is what I wanted, this is the color scheme that I wanted to do, but now I wanna add sponsors. How do I do it? Easiest way for you to add a sponsor is pick up the brand that you want. Best way to do it, Google. So you go to Google. Here it is, right? And oh, with this, I want to use, you know, I want to paint a car that has Hess gas station, right? So you go to images and you can pretty much see. Oh, there it is. Has gas station. Oh, there it is. The gas, the has logo. Right? You're going to open up in images and a lot of different options, a lot of different things. Right? If you go back to your paint scheme, oh, it's light green, white, the whole thing. You know what? If I can find it in white, this is what I'm going to do. Everything is black. All the other stuff. Not a problem. I'm going to select one over here, right? That I think has a good quality. Just click on it. Click with your right uh, mouse button and just copy the image. You need to save it if you don't want. You can just copy the image. Once you go back to Photoshop, once you copy the image, you can pretty much just paste it. You can see on the left and the right side over here that once you paste that particular image, it creates a different layer. Once again, collection of layers. Layers on top of layers will create the final picture. Right? So here it is, my logo that I wanted. And you can manipulate this by changing positions, changing everything that you want to do. Right? Changing sizes. That whole thing. I'm gonna put it over here, just to give you an idea. Okay. Uh, but this is not the color that I wanted. I want it in white. Awesome. Because you can have this particular layer, and we already showed you guys how to select something that you want and change the color. Go back to your magic wand. Select the areas that you want to change the color. Go to your brush. just paint on top of it. Voila. Uh, but I don't like the other one, that other green part. I don't like it. 
select erase. Voila. That simple. Everything is a collection of layer, guys. Okay? So once you understand this, you can add a layer, remove a layer, add a layer, change the colors, remove the whole nine yards. So this is where the whole thing starts to come into place. Okay? This is going to take... Once you have just to... You can play around, you can do whatever you want, and the more you use, the more you're going to get used to this. Once you have the paint that you think it's fine, oh, this is what I want, all right? This is what I have it, I want to have uploaded to iRacing to be racing with. You need to save this particular file as a TGA file. So you go to your save, and this is the one that you need to select, okay? You need to select your target file, TGA file. Save it as a name that you know inside a folder that you know. Right? I'm just going to save it to my desktop. Try to use a 32-bit and compress just to make it easier for you to save the file and for the file not to be that heavy. Once you have that thing done, this is where trading paints is going to come into play because you can do this in two particular ways. You can either submit the paint to the showroom of trading paints where you and everybody else running can pretty much select that paint job and use it to race or you can have just the paint saved inside your iRacing paint folder where is that you go to your files to your documents to your iRacing folder there's a folder called paints you can see every card that you have and that you've ran. You select that particular one. We were using the Ford, the Xfinity. That's the Ford 2013 Camaro. You find your iRacing ID number. I have my trading paints open over here. This is my number. Right? And you just save it using the number that you have. Right on top of what you have. Once you go inside a room and you have trading paints running, trading paints should read that paint job from your folder and will show it on the screen. Or if you don't have any paint, save it over there and you just select it from the showroom, that's where they're going to open it up. If you want to show it, if you want to add it to the showroom, this is what you do. You come to showroom. This might take a while. And you just click on Submit File. Submit a paint. You select the car that you want it. Right? Pretty easy. We were doing the Mustang. You chose your TGA file. This is why I said you need to be save the paint as a TGA file. You go to where you saved it. We saved it on our desktop. We know where it is. So, here it is, test paint, TGA file. You need a title, test paint, video. You'll need a description. If you want to put the sponsor that you have on the, that car for people can find it, you do it. But, and you'll need a picture to make sure that guys can see it. This is where normally you can do two things. You can save this also as a JPEG. So once you're going to upload it, you can just choose that particular picture. You need to comply to all the rules and you add it to showroom. There you go. So from this point on, everybody that is on trading paints have access to the showroom can select this particular paint. Very easy, very straightforward, nothing magical about it. Once you click use for Mustang paint, that's what's going to happen. Okay? So pretty easy, pretty self-explanatory. Download Photoshop. 
download the templates, start playing around. Play around, try to create stuff. The more time you spend trying to create stuff, the easier it will be. You're gonna understand all the tools. Go on YouTube, watch videos about Photoshop, which tool does what, how to create text, how to use all the other ones. It's pretty easy. It just takes time for you to understand, but YouTube pretty much is gonna tell you everything you need to know, all right? So that's it. Once you start playing around, you, I'm pretty sure there's no secret. There's nothing else. And then it's just your imagination. One tip, start by trying to recreate paints that you see from NASCAR, Formula One, Rally, whatever you want. That is going to help you just practice. Select your favorite driver. Get a couple of the, his most famous paint jobs and try to recreate it using the logos, using the whole thing. That's where you can develop a lot of the skills of just placing, make sure that you have the right pictures, the right schemes, how to select different layers, how to use different layers on top to create the visual image that you want. That is going to help you a lot, right? And let me know if you have any questions. We can always help you guys out, right? Thanks. Have a good day.